Hey everyone, this is Baylor from Scooby Dooby Doo on YouTube, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a quick navigation. So, you may have seen this on the Moo Tools website, they had it for their big main navigation a few years ago. Basically, what it does is when I mouse over one of these big buttons here, so I'm going to mouse over home, you can see it animates to a width that's wider than the rest of them, and the other shrink. And when I switch, they they just kind of swap through this different width, the different well, different widths. Okay, so I'm, that's how we. That's a jQuery. That's where I've done it with jQuery, and I'm also going to show you how to do that with CSS. So if I mouse over this with CSS, you see we get relatively the same animation. The only difference is the speeds that these go at. And jQuery or the JavaScript is or the CSS is a bit um, more jumpy or faster and doesn't work just as smooth as jQuery. But you can kind of fix that with these ends and whatever. Um, also, whenever you do this with CSS, it only works with um, WebKit browsers such as like Safari and um, Chrome, Google Chrome. Okay, so with that said, let's. I'm going to reload this page, and you can see quite a few different things have changed here. And when I mouse over these, it doesn't really do anything anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the jQuery version because it's more complicated, and it takes approximately like 21 lines with line breaks. I don't know how many it would do if I could press that. Um, but it only takes three lines with CSS. So let's get started and do this. So I'm going to show you my markup. Basically what I have here is I've wrapped these in HTML5 navigation tags. And inside of those we have an H2 tag and I have this jQuery which is kind of irrelevant. But what I want you to see is I've wrapped this in an unordered list tag and I've given it a class of quick and each list item has a class representing what it is. Okay, so we have home, videos, downloads, and forum. Okay, and then we have these links. I've done the same thing for my CSS, except the difference is I've added this ID for CSS, and that'll be used to um, make it where J jQuery can take over if it doesn't have that ID. Okay, and I'll show you, I'll show you the CSS here. Basically what we've done is I've created this quick and I've given it a width of 600 pixels and I've given it a background color. Now this background color is the same background color for my forum, okay? If I don't add that, you can kind of see a little pixel dropping back and forth um, whenever these things are animating, okay? And the reason it's doing that is because when you mouse over, they're trying to change widths and uh, they don't change it perfectly, they, they pounce back and forth by pixel. Um, so you have to add a background color to the quick, the wrapper, and I've given this overflow hidden because these links float to the left. Um, and then there's just a lot of CSS here. I, I can, I'm can i probably gonna post this somewhere and put it in the link description um, because there's three different, two different files and there's a lot of CSS here. Um, but the main thing you need to remember is you just have to style these and get these boxes to look correctly and then when I gave it each one of these hooks you know I said I have this list item with a class of home well I'm targeting the link and I'm giving it a background color okay so each one looks different so with that said we can go ahead and uh, get started so I'm just going to start with the jQuery version like I said and what I'm going to target is I'm going to do this jQuery thing I'm going to say I'm targeting a quick and then what I'm doing, I'm going to do is I want to run a function that says not ID CSS. Okay, so the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to target a, this. They both have the same class of quick, but I don't want the one that has an ID of CSS. Okay, so what we what we're going to do with that is we're going to say each run a function, and we're going to create a variable called links, and that's going to be equal to this dot find links. Okay, so basically this is going to do is it's going to say this is equal to our quick and we're going to find all the links inside of that. And when I say the links, I'm talking about home videos that. Okay, so now that we have that, what we'll do is we'll say links.hover, we'll run a function. You'll need to pass the event variable through this. Okay, just by putting an E through there. Some people do EVT, some people put all the way through event, but we really just need E. Okay, so um, what we'll do with this is we'll say this or links. Yeah, we want links. We want when you mouse over any of the links, we want all the links to animate, and 
and uh, what we'll do is we'll set the width to 125 pixels. Now I've already tested this and built this as you already saw, so I know these dimensions. But basically, when you mouse over these links, they need to compress down to 125, and whenever you want the single one to have the width, um, it needs to be 185, and you'll have to do the math yourself for your different design. So now when I mouse over these, you see they all compress. Okay, and you can see this one looks like it's getting wider, and that's just because the, the wrapper has that background color. Okay, so what we'll do now is we need to filter this. So I'm not sure if you you know the JavaScript filter function or jQuery filter function. You'll have to go over to, um, let's just go to api.jQuery.com. And here you would just search for filter. And here it is. And you'll just click on that and you can read about it. Um, I'm not going to get into it too much. Basically what you need to do though is it returns a true or false and what we need to find out is which link we've actually moused over. I realize we could call it this. You know, I think we could try to say like this, not animate the width to 185. I don't know what that will do exactly. Yeah, it's not really doing it correctly. Let's add a stop. I've already come up, I've already designed this, but I'm kind of trying to find other fit methods because it's kind of, it requires raw JavaScript for the most part. Well, that actually works. Um, that's one way of doing it. I'm going to show you this other way that I've done it um, that I know works. This looks like it works though, so it may not need this other version. You can do more testing. Basically what I'm going to do is run that filter function. Okay, so we'll create a function inside of this. Basically we're going to write a return if. Okay, that's what I've come up with a name for it. Return, and here if we write parentheses, you know that's it. I don't know if you know that's that's just like a shorthand of an if that if it returns true or returns false, basically. What we're going to try to do is going to say this dot parent. Okay, so let me show you what we're doing here in the hierarchy. When we say this, we're referring to this link. When we say parent, we're referring to this list item here. Okay, and what we're going to do is get the class name, so we'll say attribute class. Okay, so when we do that, we're saying link, list item, class, and that return home. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say if this is equal to, now this is where it gets into that raw JavaScript I was just mentioning. We're going to say e.parent, or actually the e.target.parent node dot class name. Okay, so there's a big difference with the way these look. This one looks a lot cleaner. Basically, we're doing is saying E, so that's getting our event. We're getting the target, and that's the one that we've actually moused over. Then we're getting the parent node, similar to this parent function, and then we're getting the class name. Okay, so we're going to see if those are equal to each other. I realize it's kind of weird, because basically we're write, just rewriting this here, this actual, but it, it seems like you would just put that, copy that, and put it over here, but you can't. It doesn't really work. Or it doesn't work. It's not really to it. Um, then we'll do is say, whenever we find that, we'll say um, dot animate. Actually, let's do stop dot animate. And we'll set the width to 185. Now you may notice that I'm not actually saying I want to um, animate a specific one. That's because this filter has filtered down to the one that we've actually moused over. Okay, so it's actually limited us to just one element. Um, so now when I do this, you can see it's actually working here. Let's just see. I'm noticing there's a lot of jumping. Let's see if we get that here. Yeah. Um, basically, this is another way of doing it. I guess there's two ways of doing it. There may be more. I don't really don't know how many ways there are to do this. But um, that's just the way that I came up with originally. And um, I'm going to keep using that. But I may not need to. I mean, you'll notice that I was able to do this and then write another. I was able to write this a bit and then add another little shorter one. I don't know which one's better though. And so after we do that, here's our problem though. When I mouse over this and I mouse back out, it doesn't change its width. Okay, so the way we get it to change its width is we have this links.hover. Um, if we add a second function to this hover function, if that makes sense, we're just gonna say links.animate their width down to 140, okay, because that's the original width that they had. 
So now when I mouse over, mouse back out, you can see that it does that. I just forgot, I need to add a stop to this. Okay, so stop basically just stops the animation. So when I mouse over one, it doesn't have to. Mouse over one, it doesn't have to finish its animation. It can just kind of swap to the next one. Okay, so now that's that's working, that's the jQuery version, and it's really not that complicated. Um, we could actually just turn that into a plugin so that you could just call like um, um, quick dot not uh, CSS, and then we could create a function called quick, and uh, we could just pass like width is 140 because that's the width here, and then we could say min width would be 125, and then max width would be 185. And if I created that plugin, that's all you'd have to do, because that's really all we need there. Um, I guess you could also do work with like, uh, target um, would be an ID or a class, you know, but that's just personal preference or whatever, that's just, and then you, and there's a lot more, you could do even speed here, but I'm getting way off track. Um, I have a video actually on making the plugin, so you could take this and that'll be a fun adventure for you. Okay, so now that we've actually done that, what we need to do is do the CSS version. So what I'm going to do is jump over to CSS, my style, my CSS file actually, and I'm just going to say um, CSS a hover. So when you mouse over a link, I want this to have a width of 185. Okay. So now when I mouse over this. You can see they're swapping widths, and when I mouse out, it automatically goes back to its normal version. Okay, so that's actually getting our width correctly. Um, so it's actually getting to that width. Um, the only problem is that all the others are staying at their normal width. So you can see it's creating that, that's pushing the forum link down. So what we can do is we can say when you mouse, when you hover over CSS, we want to set the link's width to 125. Okay, so now when I mouse over, you can see it's a jumpy version of what we had before. And that's really what would happen if you didn't have, if you weren't using WebK Browser. So if somebody came to your website and you're doing this with CSS alone, um, if they had Firefox, then it would look like this. So that's the only downfall to doing it with CSS right now. But eventually, most browsers will probably have the transition added to them. <clears throat> and uh, the way we'll add this transition, what I'm going to do is just edit both of these lines at once and just say WebKit transition. We'll, tra we'll add a transition for the width and we'll set it to 500 milliseconds. Okay, so now when I reload, you can see it has that animation. When I mouse over through these, you can see they're, they're swapping their width. The only problem, when I mouse back out, it jumps. So the easy fix for that is I'm just going to copy this here, and I'm going to say CSS A, and we'll just let me just tab this over, and I'm going to add that in that transition. Okay, so basically we're just I guess really with it like that. We don't even need this. Okay, so now when we mouse over, you can see it's animating, and when I mouse back out. You can see it, it has a smooth transition all the way through. And it automatically does like the stop thing. You can see I'm not just quaying here. Um, yeah, so you really need to play around with these WebKit transitions because you, you notice I only put it on here. Basically, it's just saying all links have a transition here. Okay, that's all it's really doing. Um, but the nice thing with it like this is instead of just specifying width, I could do all. So here I could say links have an opacity 0.5 here. Okay, so when I reload, you can see there they have a small opacity. And we could say when you mouse over a link, it has an opacity of 1. Now watch this. When I mouse over, you can see it fades in. It's not like really noticeable, but you can see that they're fading in when you mouse over individual ones. And a matter of fact, what we could do is has an opacity of 1. Then you mouse over like this opacity go to sound to 
let's just do 0 0.1. Okay, so now when I bounce over, see they fade out, and then when I swap, that's kind of cool too. So uh, thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below this video. Goodbye.